Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp and Corumba Fungicides and Pride Seeds. Welcome to the Corn School. I'm Bernard Tobin. I am very pleased today to be joined by Dr. David Hooker um, from the University of uh, Guelph Ridgetown campus. Dave, how's it going? Uh, I'm doing just great, just uh, preparing for the upcoming school semester. Today, I want to talk about the corn crop. Um, you know, we've had some good rains in early August. Things are setting up pretty well. But one thing I do see a lot of is variability across fields. I mean, you can look, you can look at fields. You've got some great-looking parts of the field. But then you've got parts that are two, four, six, you know, leaves behind. What does it mean to see that variability? And I guess, what's the cause? Well, there could be a lot of causes of that variability, and I, too, am very concerned about this variability, and it kind of highlights, um, I like to, 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 I guess, to highlight these management opportunities. Uh, I'm never satisfied. I farm myself. I'm kind of never satisfied with the management I'm doing. I could always do better, and I think these variable patterns in the field is a management opportunity that we have. And we need to really, I guess, take our shovel with us and dig for the issue, um, even like literally dig for the issue, um, what's causing some of this variability. This, this year especially, weather is, uh, a, plays a big role in the variability, and weather plays uh, or interacts with a lot of different factors. And so it could be too hot, too dry, too wet, too cold. And this year, we've had like all of those combinations, except maybe uh, too wet. It's starting to get too wet in some areas of Ontario, but we've had too cold during planting, really, most part. Uh, It's been dry right after planting, and it's been very hot. And so all of those things kind of interact with some issues, mainly soil issues, um, out in the field. So, Dave, what's going on here? Do we have nutrient sort of variability across the field? Do we have planter issues? You know, why, what's happening? Well, there's, there's all kinds of issues, and really every field is different in terms of variability. And one field might be caused by a different variability, might be a different cause um, than uh, another field. And so it could be just simply a poor crop rotation. This year, the fields that have been under a poor crop rotation have been really showing the corn after corn. That has shown, those kinds of fields have shown tremendous variability. And also tillage effects as well. So too much tillage before planting can have some serious, perhaps uh, compaction issues or crusting issues or um, uh, just poor soil structure in general if like year after year, excessive amounts of tillage. So another factor is uh, fertility. So there could be all kinds of different fertility issues. There could be a nitrogen deficiency uh, issue. It could be a phosphorus issue. So maybe pockets of the field have low amounts of phosphorus or potash compared to other areas. And those areas in the field that are deficient could be even more or show these crop effects even more so with uh, unfavorable weather conditions. So you take, for instance, a nutrient stress, combine it with a weather stress, and those added uh, added stresses could be not only one plus one equals two, it could be one plus one equals three, Mm. an impact to the crop. And so that's why we're seeing a lot of these stresses, I guess, or effects out in the field, just because we have all these stresses that are adding up together, and that is really showing or putting a lot of stress uh, onto the plants. So Dave, we have we have streaks in the field as well. We have drought issues, pockets in the field that, you know, is has really been um, affected by drought, so caused by poor water holding capacity. We have weedy patches in the field, so perhaps weed escapes uh, from a pre-emergent or no pre-emergent herbicide or residual herbicide at planting. And those effects on weeds may have had a legacy uh, effect on the crop in terms of um, its impact after even after the weeds are controlled. And then we have uh, insect issues. And so maybe underground um, insects like a European chafer or wireworm effect can also have 
these uh, these issues cause uh, that cause variability out in the field. Dave, talk about um, yield impact. I know you've done some research over the years about you know what happens when a, a plant is two, four, six leaves behind. Basically, you know the field. Yeah, when we have there's really uh, a number of different, I guess, um, uh, effects or or different. Um, um, classes of variability and one of them is a variability within the row so one plant might be variable the next pl- are, um different than then one plant could be different from another plant and so you take that kind of variability and good data our data shows that one out of six plants if it's four leaves behind another plant um overall the overall field will re- will see a 10 percent reduction in yield so 10% reduction, that's like right off the profit margin and over 200 acre field potential, that's a 20 bushel per acre uh, yield loss caused by that plant to plant variability. But then we have these patches in the field as well. So patches that um, are maybe delayed in development, usually a delay in development during the vegetative, vegetative stage is caused by stress. Stress delays, the, tends to delay development especially in the vegetative stages. And so we see these pockets in the field where every plant or a lot of plants are together and they're all delayed. So this has tremendous effect in terms of when should you apply, for instance, a fungicide when we have all of these patches in the field or at different stages compared to maybe 90% of the field. And so it brings up a lot of these questions, like how do you manage a fungicide application or an insect a- applica- or insecticide application for controlling western bean cutworm? And those western bean cutworm could be uh, can see these delayed plants if the peak flight is occurring when these delayed plants are tasseling. Maybe those plants would be more susceptible to western bean cutworm injury, which could you know, exacerbate uh, dun or gibberella mm-hmm. ear rot issues as well, um, caused by the, the, the insect um, infestation. Final question for you, Dave, and that is, you know, um, here we are in August, obviously not going to fix these issues this year, but what do you, you know, for any advice for, for growers about you know, how to fix these things in coming years? Obviously, I think one of the things you start with is that rotation. Yeah, exactly. The crop rotation, like the, you're this is right out of my songbook, right? <laughs> the crop rotation. So including wheat, we have shown very good data that including wheat in the rotation can mitigate uh, a lot of these weather effects. And of course, if you have forages in your rotation or uh, other small grain cereal crops, those crops too, a longer cut type crop rotation or a crop rotation that includes forages does mitigate these uh, weather effects caused by drought or compaction or so and the better the soil structure of course the be it the the more resilient that soil is to these uh, stress effects so good sound agronomic practices are very important so of course everyone knows do not work the field when it's too wet like some fields you might just take a chance on it you know by going out to the field you know it is on the wetter side but you may have you know, 5,000 acres to plant with a 12-row planter. You know, maybe the planting um, system is a, is a bit behind um, capacity of the farm. And so you have to go to the field. But, of course, stay off the field when it's too wet. Uh, maybe reduce tillage. Maybe that last tillage pass isn't necessary. Control traffic. Or maybe strip tillage may be an option. So strip tillage is essentially a controlled traffic. Uh, system as well and so that would help um, do not till when it's wet subsurface drainage maybe a field maybe needs more drainage uh, subsurface drainage in some areas of the field uh, than others um, for herbicide for weed issues maybe a residual herbicide maybe that needs to be at the top um, or more top of mm-hmm. priority uh, to a lot of fields to have some residual herbicides to control those early weed escapes uh, soil sample problem areas is very important as well. So if you see a problem area, you know, like it could be due to compaction. Like that could be an issue. So you have to dig the roots and examine the roots, but it could also be a fertility issue or a pH issue as well. So the bottom line is, I guess, to go to the field and look at these areas, problem areas, 
put your CSI hat on, and CSI to me is crop scene investigation. Mm -hmm. And put your CSI hat on and scout your field and determine, figure out what is causing this variability. Awesome. Hey, Dave, uh, great to have you on the Corn School as usual. Great insights. Hey, thanks for stopping by. And uh, hey, uh, good luck with uh, school. I know you'll be heading back there soon. Thanks, Bernard. Take care.